Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the different texture brushes, whether you want to paint in 2D or 3D, and then where to find the settings for each individual brush. So without further ado, let's get started. Now the first thing I want to talk about is that Blender 2.8 is set up for you to paint in 3D on your model. So it's set up to have your texture displayed over on your uh, image editor and then just paint directly onto your model in the 3D viewport using the texture paint mode. But you do have the ability to paint in 2D. And so if you go to your image editor, all you have to do is switch the image editor from view to paint and you'll get all of the same options for tools and then you'll be able to access all of the same settings you'll just be painting in the 2d image editor rather than in the 3d uh, texture paint mode I'm not going to talk about this just know that everything that we talk about for the 3d viewport you can also do in the image editor by switching into paint mode all right so there are four main brushes that you're going to be using in blender texture paint mode they are the draw brush the soften brush, the smear brush, and the fill brush. Currently, we do have two other brush options, though, the mask and clone brushes. They work a little differently, but as of this video, there actually uh, is no Blender 2.8 documentation on them, and they're not really working the way that they're supposed to. The mask brush is a really cool brush from Blender 2.79, but it's not yet operational. And then the clone brush, if it works the way that I think it will, will be a cool brush as well. But for the time being, like I said, they're not working. So when they are working and there's documentation, I will produce a video talking about those brushes specifically. But for now, we're just going to talk about the main four that you're going to use. Now, each of the four brushes has its purpose, and we're gonna get into that in just a second. But let's talk about the settings for each brush. So each brush has some settings, and just like every other tool that we've talked about on the channel, they have a little tool properties uh, in the property panel, and you can see all of the tools and the property changes that you can make to that brush if you just scroll down. The cool thing about this is just like with the 3D modeling tools, all of these properties in the property panel are also displayed up here at the top, and so you don't have to scroll down any longer. You can just click up at the top and choose what you need. And I think that's a little bit faster. In fact, since this has been a new feature, I haven't really been scrolling. I've just gotten used to going up to the top. I think it's a little more intuitive. There's also three settings that can be shared between all of the brushes. And we're going to talk about that. And then I'll go into how each brush works. So the three settings that can be shared between all the brushes are radius, how big your brush is, strength, how strong your brush is going to be pressed to your model, and color, which obviously is just the color you're painting with. You can set whether or not they're going to be unified across all your brushes by going up to projection paint up at the top and seeing the unified brush settings and then clicking a checkbox to unify size, strength, and color. By default, only size is selected, but I have found that just like sculpting, Unifying the strength of a brush uh, is actually a much better way of doing it for my workflow. It might not be for yours. And this color thing, I believe, is new. And if it is, this is one of the greatest tools because if you jump back and forth between the draw brush and maybe the fill brush for certain areas, you may end up painting in different colors. And so it allows you to keep that color consistent up between all of the brushes. All right, so how do we change the radius? Well, radius can either be changed by coming up to the top or on the right-hand side here and simply increasing the radius size. But since you can't see the radius as you change it, it is a little more intuitive simply to hit the F key as you change the brush size up or down. Now, I will say that the brush size is based on pixels, but it's not pixels of texture. It's pixels of the screen itself. So if we zoom way out, we're still painting in 344 pixels at the moment. And if I simply press and click uh, to drop in, it paints the entire model. Whereas if I zoom way in on the model, I'm still painting in 344 pixels, but in the texture, this is a much smaller area. So your texture is absolutely uh, changed based on the radius for how far you are zoomed in or out. Similarly, we have the strength setting. You can either change it up at the top here, or we can hit Shift F, and the closer we get to one, the stronger it will be, 
the closer we get to zero, the weaker it will be. And you can actually see how that color is shown in the middle as either really dim or really strong for that color. So we'll go ahead and uh, actually let's get a, a lighter color here. The strength setting is how firm you are pressing the brush to the canvas. So at a much lower strength, like we're at right now, it'll take a few strokes, which will build over time in order to reach the uh, full color of, that I want. But if I increase the strength all the way up to one and I draw, you can see the color is just placed directly there without regard for um, build up because it's just already being pressed as hard as it can. So the strength can change how hard your brush is being pressed and then the radius will change the size of your brush and then the color will just ensure that whether you switch to the fill brush or the draw brush, the color you're going to be painting in is the same. Now let's take a minute and talk about the four individual brushes and how they work. All right, so we've seen how the draw brush works pretty well so far. We just increase the strength up here for one, uh, and it will draw perfectly. You can change the radius, whatever, but this is just your standard drawing brush. We also have a soften brush, and the soften brush is really good at either blurring or sharpening up an area. And it actually has two settings over here on the right. One is soften and one is sharpened. So by default, it's set to soften. And if we soften up an area, you can see that it's just applying a blur effect to kind of soften up uh, the texture that's actually on there. You can also sharpen it if you go over it. Now the sharpening isn't as nice as maybe you'd want it to be, but um, it will sharpen up areas. It's just not something that I would say use a lot of. I'm not quite sure how it does its job. Uh, but you can see the effect that it's having. So it can soften, it can sharpen, but it's called the soften brush for a reason because even though it can sharpen, it's much better at softening. Then we have the smear brush. The smear brush's job is just to smear colors around. If we decrease the strength, we'll actually get a much better view here. So let's say we have two colors areas, green and blue. If we start in the green and work our way towards the blue, you can see that we're just smearing in green color here. You can also see that as we go over the UV grid texture, it is smearing the UV grid textures as it goes. And the smearing effect is directly related to how strong you're doing because while at a low strength, it kind of pulls the color and then smears it and leaves it in place. At a high strength, it actually takes the color and just kind of runs with it wherever you're trying to go. So we can just take this one color all the way across and it's just going to do whatever it needs to do. So low strength with the smear brush and everything should work out. And then the fill brush does what you would expect a fill brush to do, which is simply fill in an area. Now the fill brush is supposed to be affected by strength uh, so it should be filling in areas quite lightly, but right now it appears that it's just filling in everything at full strength capacity. And so that could be very useful, but uh, that looks like a bug at the moment. But it normally is affected by the strength value, and so it will take a little bit of time if it's at a lower strength to fill up an area with a particular color. All right, so don't forget though, from our last video, you wanna save if you're happy with this texture, which I'm not, but let's say we were, you'd have to come up here, hit save, or save as just to save it. Otherwise, when you reopen the Blender file, all of your textures will be gone. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and I will see you in the next video.